Darren, really appreciate the time, man. I got a million questions for you because it feels like college football is totally changing before our eyes. It is. And this is a byproduct not only of NIL rights, which were established as of July 1, 2021, but importantly, the creation and existence of the transfer portal. You mentioned that Jordan Addison is really our first premier free agent. And again, even if NIL was not in the picture, that could still be true just by virtue of the existence of the transfer portal. And I think a lot of people are getting ahead of themselves. And I know that a lot of people, especially on social media, are speculating. This must be about NIL. I saw something yesterday, someone with about a thousand followers and maybe a thousand retweets saying that he was offered $3 million to go to USC. There is absolutely no veracity to that statement. Look at Jordan. Here's an individual, as you mentioned, the Bolitnikoff Award winner. He lost his first round quarterback. He lost his coordinator. He lost his wide receiver coach. So can we blame him for just putting his name into the transfer portal and looking at what the opportunities may be out there. Remember, the transfer portal opens and closes. He had to put his name in just now before the portal closed. That's the big reason why you, he finds his, his name in there currently. All right, so Darren, are you are you repping him? I guess how, how do you know how do you know what he has or hasn't got from USC? Unless uh, are you? I, and by the way, just so people know. They are allowed to have agents now. They, I mean, I, you know, they are allowed to have people repping them and NIL. Are you repping him? I, I guess how – otherwise, how would you know what he has or hasn't been offered? I, I am not currently representing him. Much like you, I have some very strong sources, people who are very close to him. And unlike many of the individuals who are out there speculating on social media, hearing from those individuals, I'm told that all these assumptions that are being made are very false thus far. Um, I did work with Kenny Pickett on his intellectual property when he was in college. Um, I know people surrounding this specific situation. And uh, while I'm not representing him, and I'm not an agent, I'm a lawyer who works closely with agents and with players, um, I do have some pretty good information. All right, so Darren, let's just for, forget how much USC supposedly offered him, because I've seen the $3 million in a house in California and all that stuff. But let's, let's get to the crux of this. They could, right? I mean, he's in the transfer portal, name, image, and likeness. There's these collectives now, which I want you to explain, but it's basically legal now, correct me if I'm wrong, for certain collectives from schools like Tennessee or Texas A&M or whoever to say, hey, Jordan, uh, you know, there's there's a good chance you'll have a million dollars or $2 million of name, image, and likeness money if you come play college football here? It's a complicated question. Uh, from a legal standpoint, there are roughly 25 states that currently have NIL laws in place, California being one of them. And by and large, these laws actually prohibit the offering of money to players before they're enrolled. And then if you separate the law from the rules, I know the NCA has not really done anything since July 1, 2021, to enforce its NIL regulations. But in its bare bones rules, one of those, and I think the most important to the NCAA, is that there can't be compensation offered to a player contingent on the athlete enrolling at a specific university, which is exactly what you would have here if, in fact, a collective, and a collective being a third party, not part of the university, but with a specific mission to support the university and the athletes at that university. So if you have a collective making an offer like this, it could put the university itself in a pickle with the NCAA. But more importantly, if the player actually engages in these types of conversations before being enrolled, the athlete is putting unnecessary risk on himself. Because if the NCAA decides one day to wake up and take action to enforce its rules, I think that's where it's going to look. God forbid someone like Jordan, the Bolitnikoff winner, ends up becoming ineligible for this upcoming season. So I think if we're looking objectively, it just doesn't make sense for someone like that to take that sort of unnecessary risk. 